In this video lesson, we're going to talk about probably the most important nutrient, and that's water. We need to ensure that our horses are drinking enough water and we support their hydration, and then we know how to monitor their hydration status. Now, we know animals can't survive very long without water. Why is that? Well, it has many different physiological functions within the horse and us, and here's just a few of them. So if we think about thermoregulation and electrolyte balance, the horse is hot, they sweat, so they're going to lose some electrolytes and they're losing water to maintain proper body temperature. Then cardiovascular function, blood flow. We know horses have to be properly hydrated to perform well, and water is critical to their recovery. Then when we look at the digestive system, we know hydration status is very critical to keep that feed or digestive moving through the digestive tract. Now, you may ask yourself, how much does my horse need each day? Well, horses should always have free choice, clean water all day long. But here's some examples of how much a horse may drink. Now, if we look at a 500 kilogram or 1100 pound horse, in non-exercise, moderate climate, so it's not too hot, they should be drinking anywhere from like 25 to 35 liters per day. So that's up to nine gallons per day. Now, if we take that same horse and put them in a hot climate where they're going to sweat and lose water, that can go up to 60 liters or 16 gallons. Then you can see exercise also stimulates more water intake and then that lactating mare. So here's some tips to support water intake in your horse. First, the most important, like I said, provide constant access to fresh, clean water all day long. Now, you can do that with water troughs. So you want to make sure they're easily accessible to your horses and they need to be cleaned at least every couple of weeks. You don't want any off-putting flavors or smells in there that are going to discourage your horse from drinking. Now, if you do use buckets, you can monitor your horse's water intake and they need to be cleaned daily. But this is interesting. Horses preferred drinking from light colored buckets than from dark colored buckets. So keep that in mind. And if you're using automatic waterers, it's again, interesting that horses don't drink as much, say from buckets. They're harder to monitor the daily intake of how much your horse is drinking each day, but they also need to be cleaned daily. Now here's the next tip. You can feed salt daily. We highly encourage it because that sodium intake triggers a thirst response in the horse they're going to want to drink more. So you can add two to four tablespoons of salt to their feed each day. And you can also provide some loose salt free choice so the horse can get at it. And again, that's going to support their hydration. Now, the next tip is to add electrolytes to horses that are traveling or exercise, especially in those hot climates. Horses lose a lot of electrolytes in their sweat and we need to replenish that in their diet to support their hydration. So you can just add in this simple supplement with their daily salt provision, and that will help your horse. Now, the next tip is you could provide feeds with high water content. So first, if your horse is on pasture, the forages have more moisture content, the fresh grass or legumes, say versus hay. So that could help the hydration in the horse. You can soak beet pulp or other soaked feeds, which will increase hydration, or you can soak hay to increase their water intake. Now, assessing hydration status, this is very important too. If you're using water buckets, you can monitor the daily water intake. And if the horse is drinking a lot, you can check on the bucket and that will flag you to fill it up. So you know your horse is drinking. Lower water intake can lead to dehydration. So again, the benefit of using water buckets like this is you can see how much they're drinking each and every day. Conversely, a de dehydrated horse may not want to drink much. So keep that in mind as well. So the next step you could look at is their feces. Manure should be well-formed, but moist and easily breakable. So you can use a rake or a shovel to look at that. Dry manure may indicate dehydration. 
Now, if you're concerned with your horse's hydration status, you can do the skin pinch test. So along their neck, you can just pinch the skin and it should snap back within one to two seconds. If it remains tented more than two seconds, that could be an indication that your horse is dehydrated. So next you would wanna look at their gums. They should be pink and moist, that we call it soft pink. And you can check the capillary refill time by just pressing your thumb against their gums. It will turn opaque white, but within one to two seconds, it should return to that soft pink color. If you see dry tacky gums or that capillary refill time is longer than two seconds, that could be an indication that your horse is dehydrated. The only way you're gonna know for sure if your horse is dehydrated is speak with your veterinarian and they can take a blood test and they look at the packed cell volume. So a packed cell volume higher than 42% is often due to dehydration. Now horses are at a higher risk of dehydration due to their high sweat volume and electrolyte loss. So when you compare them to humans, horses sweat more and they lose more electrolytes. So they are at a greater risk to dehydration than say us. Now, what are some common causes of dehydration? We know things like prolonged trailering time with few water breaks or a horse that sweats quite a bit, uh, especially in hot or humid climates or horses that are exercised for prolonged periods or very intense exercise, they lose a lot of sweat. So they're losing a lot of water. What's also interesting is horses are at risk of dehydration in the winter because they don't like to drink cold water. Or if a horse is sick, they lose a lot of water with things like diarrhea or colitis. So we have to monitor their hydration status if they are sick. Now the consequences of dehydration and low water intake. The main one is colic. Again, this is the number one killer of horses under the age of 20 and impaction colic is the most common type. And one of the things is in impaction colic is the digesta is dry because the horse is, is probably dehydrated. So that is a concern and the severity of dehydration is associated with the severity of colic. So please keep that in mind. Or the horse can suffer something like heat stress because they're sweating a lot and they're losing those electrolytes that impairs their ability to cool down or to thermoregulate. So the horse isn't able to maintain a normal body temperature. So overall, water is critical to your horse. And this video lesson gives you an idea of how much water your horse should be drinking each and every day. And then some tips to check on their hydration status. Now, in the next module, we're going to continue on this discussion with nutrition and our horses. So look for that.